Now we'll discuss a simple and very common heart rhythm abnormality that is ventricular ectopic beats. It's seen very frequently in many people and most of them are normal also. But just because they are simple and commonly seen without any abnormality, don't think that they are always simple. Sometimes, especially when it is associated with structural heart disease, ventricular ectopics can be dangerous that we will come to later on in the discussion. Normal heart rhythm originates from the sinus node which is the natural pacemaker of the heart but in ventricular ectopics it is exactly from the opposite location. The focus originates from the ventricle usually due to increased irritability or some other mechanism it could be re-entry or triggered activity. Some mechanism is causing an extra focus to fire from the ventricle. So if this is a normal sequence P wave followed by QRS and T wave, ventricular ectopic is a premature beat which occurs before the next normal sinus beat and it is usually followed by a pause. This pause following a ventricular ectopic beat is called as a fully compensated pause. If you calculate the RR intervals, this will be the basic RR interval. The interval including the pause will be exactly twice the regular RR interval. That is the meaning of fully compensated pause, compensatory pause. In case of atrial ectopic, the pause will be less than compensated so that the next sinus beat will come earlier than this. That is because an atrial ectopic from the upper part gets conducted back to the sinus node and resets the sinus cycle so that the sinus cycle restarts again earlier. That's why you have a less than fully compensated pause for an atrial or supraventricular ectopic while for a ventricular ectopic it is a fully compensated one. In ventricular ectopic it may not get conducted all the way up to the sinus node and even if it gets conducted the time taken is so much that the original sinus cycle would have fired in between. But that uh, sinus cycle will not manifest here because when the sinus impulse reaches the AV node and the ventricular impulse reaches there, they cancel each out so that the pause is occurring. This is known as interference, AV dissociation. That is when a ventricular ectopic is conducting upwards, sinus ectopic is a sinus beat is coming downwards, there is no conduction through the AV node because AV node would be refractory by that time. So that's why you have a fully compensated pause in ventricular ectopic while the pause in supraventricular ectopic is less than compensated. Now, how do you recognize ventricular ectopic beats on an ECG? As you can very well see here, it is premature and the QRS complex is quite different from the normal beat. It's a wide QRS. It is not preceded by a P wave. And this is shown as a QS complex. It is diagrammatic. It need not be like this. Any form of QRS abnormality can occur. A wide, bizarre QRS complex is characteristic of a ventricular ectopic, not preceded by a P wave, and then usually followed by a compensatory pause. Sometimes there may not be compensatory pause. A certain particularly timed ventricular ectopy can occur exactly between two QRS complexes here. Then it is called as an interpolated ventricular ectopic. There will be no change in the sinus rhythm. That usually occurs when the rate is a little slow, sinus rate is slow, so that there is enough space here for a ventricular ectopic to occur and not to disturb the regular sinus rhythm then it is known as interpolated ventricular ectopic beat. Now, how does the ventricular ectopic manifest clinically? This is the pulse volume of a normal beat. This is another normal beat. But when the ventricular ectopics occur prematurely, there is not sufficient filling of the ventricle. The diastolic period is shorter. So ventricle feels lesser so that the output is also lesser. The pulse volume for a ventricular ectopic is less. When there is a pause, 
there is plenty of filling of the ventricle and you have a strong pulse after the pause. Moreover, since this is a weak contraction, all the calcium released during that is not utilized and you have more calcium to be utilized in the next pulse. That increased anotropy is also responsible for a stronger pulse. And there are many other things to be thought of here. Most often it is the pause that many feel. Some persons who are regularly checking their pulse will feel this pause because this earlier pulse they may not feel. Sometimes they may be so weak that it may not be there also. And uh, although the heart, round, heart sound will be there, pulse may not be there. Even if the pulse is there, it can be weak also, may not be felt also. So, often the pause is felt. Secondly, the strong pulse is associated with a stronger contraction of the heart muscle. So, a palpitation is also felt. And occasionally what can happen is that this ventricular ectopic can occur, coincide with the previous atrial contraction. That is, when ventricular ectopic occurs, the atrial contraction can occur simultaneously. Then what happens is that AV valves will be closed at that time and the contractile force of the atrium will be transmitted back to the superior and inferior vena cava. So this will manifest as a cannon wave in the jugular venous pulse. So ventricular ectopic beat is one of the commonest causes or cannon waves even though the typical cause which you learn is complete heart block. But Ventricular ectopics being so common, much more common than complete heart block, it will be the commonest cause for cannon waves. So some of the features are to be remembered like that. Then the next beat is usually a normal beat with a normal pulse volume. I have mentioned about the compensatory pause initially and there is another interval which is important in ventricular ectopic that is a coupling interval from the normal beat to the abnormal beat. This is known as a coupling interval. The shorter the coupling interval, that means it is more premature and when it, is, when it is very premature, it can lead to other arrhythmias which we will come to shortly. This is an important arrhythmia which can be precipitated by ventricular ectopic beat. This is regular sinus rhythm. A ventricular ectopic beat has occurred. A premature beat almost on the lower limb of the T wave. And it has precipitated a ventricular tachycardia, wide QRS tachycardia at a fast rate. This is a dangerous arrhythmia. So this is one of the potential risks of ventricular ectopic beats. But this does not occur in each and every one person with ventricular ectopic beats. It's only in a few unfortunate persons who develop ventricular tachycardia precipitated by ventricular ectopic beats. This is the most dangerous arrhythmia which can be precipitated by ventricular ectopic beats. Even though it is quite rare for this to occur. If that is occurring, that is cardiac arrest and will need immediate cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Ventricular fibrillation, totally disorganized electrical activity with cardiac standstill. So, the chance is more if there are associated diseases, structural heart disease, and left ventricular dysfunction as well as abnormal electrolytes then the chance for a ventricular ectopic beat precipitating ventricular fibrillation will be higher in ventricular ectopics the sequence of activation is different as we discussed earlier instead of arising from the sinus node and coming down the conduction system into the ventricles the focus originates from the ventricle and spreads along the myocardium into all parts of the ventricle. So naturally the QRS is wide and you have an abnormal sequence of activation. So synchrony is lost. Normally when the lateral wall contracts, septum also contracts so that the left ventricular cavity size decreases. But in ventricular ectopic when this region contracts first, this region is not contracting. When the impulse spreads here slowly and this region starts contracting, this region would have started relaxing. That is how left ventricular dyssynchrony can occur in ventricular ectopics. So in the long run, if there are a large number of ectopics, say more than 10,000 per day or more, then the left ventricular contractions can become weaker, left ventricle can become dilated 
and produce something like a tachycardiomyopathy due to the fast heart rate and dyssynchrony. This, is, this occurs only in rare cases in which there are large number of ventricular ectopics. You would have seen that some would have even persistent bigeminal rhythm or trigeminal rhythm when that occurs for a long period of time. A few ventricular ectopics will never cause heart muscle dysfunction, only very large number. So that is the one reason why you may need to treat ventricular ectopic. What are the workup to be done in a patient with ventricular ectopic beats? Most important is to do a thorough clinical evaluation to look for evidence of structural heart disease. Because if there is structural heart disease, the risk is small. Then you would like to check the electrolytes because electrolyte abnormalities like hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia can be associated with ventricular ectopic beats. After that, an echocardiogram will be done to assess for any structural abnormalities of the heart and the left ventricular function. And after all these basic workup, most often you would get 24 hour or 48 hour or even 72 hours of Holter monitoring. Holter monitoring is continuous recording of the ECG using electrodes attached to the chest and the device is a battery powered device attached to the belt. It will continuously record for the period which is specified and then after the period you will remove this and connect to the Holter analyzer which will give you a printout the number of ventricular rectopics uh, and whether there are more serious arrhythmias like ventricular tachycardia during the period of monitoring. Now beyond this there are wireless monitors available. This part will not be there. A patch will be there which will be attached on the chest and then it will transmit the signals through a mobile phone into the network and you will give similar results like the Holter monitor. But uh, usually they are intermittent monitors that is they monitor continuously but most often only the important events are recorded in the reports rather than the continuous report available from the Holter. And the Holter is available in house in most hospitals while the wireless patch monitoring you have to depend on another service provider. So most often we go for Holter first and only for those patients who are not ready to be uh, continuously monitored uh, with a device like this, we'll attach the patch and then they can do the wireless remote monitoring as well. When there are frequent ventricular ectopics, symptomatic in spite of medical management, sometimes, especially if there is left ventricular dysfunction, you may have to have invasive studies known as electrophysiology study, EP. And that is done by introducing catheters into cardiac chambers through veins and arteries from the femoral vein, jugular vein and sometimes through the aorta also, femoral artery. Multiple catheters are positioned within the heart and intracardiac electrograms are recorded. These are different types of catheters. This is quadripolar with 4 electrodes, decapolar with 10 electrodes in the coronary sinus, a quadripolar at the his bundle level and this is the ablation catheter. Suppose you can find the abnormal focus which needs ablation, this can be used. You can see that the tip is thicker than the other diagnostic catheters. All the others are diagnostic catheters. These are this is a therapeutic catheter for ablation. Radio frequency current can be delivered through this and a tiny burn produced at the abnormal focus ablating the arrhythmia. This particular location is not for ventricular ectopia ablation. This is for uh, other conditions. 